Hello. Good morning, all my dear children. Welcome back to the class seven science. Okay. Today we'll be doing chapter number nine, soil. Now you'll think why we are doing chapter number nine. This is because I am preparing this video for all the sections of science, right? So um, we all, all the sections are at different levels, right? Somebody is doing chapter seven, somebody is doing chapter eight. So just to maintain uniformity, I am going to start with chapter number nine. First of all, this chapter does not have a previous link. So that is why it will be easier for you to understand. Right. So just to maintain uniformity and so that everybody understands at the same level, we are going to start chapter number nine, soil. OK, so first of all, uh, before starting the chapter, I just hope everybody is safe at home. Yes. So please take care, especially take care of your uh, water hygiene. Yes. Of your food habits, because uh, there is so much infection around. So please be careful. All right. Okay, let's start the chapter. Chapter number nine, soil. This chapter is telling us about the various types of soil. Later on, it will tell in the last part of the chapter. Before that, it is telling us why is soil important for us? Yes, I hope most of the things you've already studied in your previous classes. You very well are aware of the fact why soil is important for us. Where all uh, do we use soil? Yes, plus... What are the properties of soil, right? So all those things, little bit we are going to revise the previous knowledge. Little bit we are going to learn new. Yes, so we are going to start the chapter. Let me just quickly share the screen with you so that I can show you the chapter and teach you according to the topics. All right. So here is my chapter. Okay, just give me a moment. I think I have shared the wrong screen just give me one moment okay wps office here is it. okay all right so here i have chapter number nine soil okay so first we come to the first activity here i have already given you the um, basic introduction about soil why it is important because it is first of all it's a natural resource yes it provides uh, the shelter to all the plants Right, all the plants will grow in the soil. So, whatever food we are getting, we're getting it from plants. So, all that food directly comes from the nutrients which are provided by the soil to the plants. Right, along with the nutrients, water is also provided by the soil only. Along with that, we have got various uh, organisms which are also living under the soil right so food is one major thing then shelter for various organisms plus clothing why clothing because if you remember we started in the fiber chapter yes there are natural fibers and artificial fibers so the natural fibers are coming from plants so whatever natural fibers we are using for our clothing uh, needs that is also given by the soil, right? So that is why it is said that soil is an inseparable part of our life. Let's now come to the activity 9.1. In activity 9.1, we are collecting some oils, uh, some sorry, not oil, some soil samples and we are observing them carefully, right? So what do we observe? We are trying to observe what all things are present in that soil sample. Understand? So, if you, uh, if you think, can you tell me what all will be the things which you find in the soil sample? Yes, we find some sort of little bit garbage, right? And we also find uh, bigger pebbles, smaller pebbles, small uh, soil particles, some uh, dead parts of some leaves or organisms, right? Small little insects, all these things we find in the soil, right? So... Uh, that basically tells us what all things are present in the soil, okay? Also, here that we have a special blue box. If you know the blue boxes, they give us additional knowledge about the chapter or about the topic. So here, the blue box is telling us that polythene bags and plastics, they pollute the soil, also kill the organisms living in the soil. That is why we try to uh, ban the use of plastics, polythene bags, 
because what happens is these all things they remain in the soil right so if you try to get a sample of soil surely you will find some kind of a small plastic or some remain of a plastic bag a polythene bag something like that most probably will be present in your soil sample which clearly tells us that this is something which remains in the soil so it pollutes the soil it also kills the organisms which are living in it so that is why we need to be careful while using plastics and also while throwing the plastics right then other substances which pollute the soil they are again some waste products chemicals pesticides right so these all should be when they are thrown into the soil they should be uh, carefully thrown like you know it, not just like uh, it, they should be first treated they should be made um, harmless and then they should be thrown into the soil okay coming now to 9.2 which is the soil profile okay uh, just give me one moment I am just my laptop battery is turning low just give me one moment I will quickly put it on charge Okay, so um, coming back to the soil profile. What is soil profile, beta? Soil profile is, in simple words, it is the um, it is the uh, description of the various layers of the soil. Okay, what are the various layers of the soil? The description is the soil profile. All right. Now. Um, we know that soil is made up of different layers. You have studied it in your previous classes also. Let us just see what all layers are there. Now we are having the same uh, soil sample. And what, we, what have we done? We have just simply put it into water, right? So when I put it into water and I leave it undisturbed for some time, what will I observe? I will observe the different layers of the soil. You can see in figure 9.2, we can see the different layers of the soil. Let's talk about the, these layers in detail now. The first layer, the topmost layer you can see in the water, that is the humus. What is humus, beta? I think you've already studied about that. Humus is the inorganic, sorry, I'm sorry, organic dead matter right so whatever uh, dead plants dead animals they are present all those when they decompose in the soil what they form they form humus right you remember the name compost the name manure they all are related terms they are all formed by humus because they are the decomposed dead organic matter right dead organic matter means dead living matter something which was living that uh, that has got a living source they when they dead when they are dead when they decompose they form the dead rotting matter which is the humus okay now let's come to the second layer which is the water right water if i have added water into it here i will have little bit clear water why because humus is lighter, so humus will float over the top. Now, whatever things are uh, down, like, uh, you know, whatever things are below the water level, they are all heavier than water. That is why they are below water, right? Let's talk about the first layer now. That is clay. Clay beta composes of soil of very small particle size. Very small particle size, okay? When it is little bigger, it becomes sand. And when it is quite bigger, it becomes gravel. Okay, you have all seen that in your um, daily life, whatever very small um, soil particles are there, we call them clay. If they are a little bigger, we call them sand. And after that, we call them gravel, which we are, which are slightly bigger stone-like structures, pebbles, which we say, right? Now, um, how is soil formed? Soil is formed by the process of weathering. What is weathering? Simply, uh, I think you all know that soil is made up of rocks. Yes. How is it made up of rocks? The name of the process is weathering, right? What happens? 
the rocks they break down they break down by the action of wind by the action of water by the action of climate so due to all these actions when rocks they break down into smaller particles first of all bigger rocks will break down into smaller rocks then smaller rocks into even smaller stones then those stones into even smaller gravel or then sand and finally clay right so all these they form the soil right these the different parts of soil they are made up of by the weathering of rocks right now we come to the next topic which is our soil profile the main topic right so the i told you earlier also the description of the various layers of the soil so suppose it's just like a cake have you ever cut a cake you cut, cut a cake like this right um, longitudinal but if you cut a vertical section out of it suppose i want to take out a section of the cake what do i do i put two cuts nearby and take out the section so when i take out the section in that section can i see all the layers of the cake same way if i cut the soil if i cut the uh, cut a cake which is made up of soil if i cut it and i find out the different layers i will call those layers as the soil profile understand now next i have these different layers why are they different because they differ in their texture in their color in their depth in their chemical composition everything right these layers are also known as horizons okay these layers are also known as horizons i would uh, like that all of you make the diagram figure 9.3 in your copy okay figure 9.3 soil profile diagram you have to draw in your copy because that is the diagram which tells us about the soil profile now let's talk about each layer in detail talk about the first layer a horizon a horizon it is also known as the top soil yes why the top soil because it's the topmost layer right plus do you know its importance do you know the importance of the top layer i'm sure everybody would know that top layer or the top soil or the a horizon this is a soft porous layer which retains more water that is rich in humus also right and that is rich, rich in nutrients also okay so all these nutrients all this uh, humus yeah water all these things make our soil fertile fit for the plant growth right so first layer a horizon that is the layer of the soil which best supports the plant growth understand also we know that this layer only provides a shelter for many living organisms right like whatever insects we have little worms we have all those they live in the top soil right the roots also of the plants they they are there embedded in the top soil as you can clearly see in the diagram however um if you, if there are very big trees now so sometimes their roots are so deep that they can even touch the b horizon right but generally if i talk about plants their layer their soil their um, what do you say roots they are always in the a horizon understand with this we come to the next layer of the soil which is the b horizon it has got comparatively lesser humus why you already saw in that diagram of the glass humus was floating over the top since it is light in weight right so most of the humus is there in the top soil only very little amount will be there in the second one which is the b horizon but there will be lots of new lots of minerals in that okay lots of minerals will be present in the b horizon right this layer is generally harder right than the a horizon i told you a horizon is soft do you know why is a horizon soft and porous that is because of the presence of more humus if we have more humus in the soil it is always soft it is always porous that means it is always able to absorb more water retain more water right now next i have the c horizon okay c horizon is the third layer which is made up of small rocks okay small rocks which were actually parts of bigger rocks when they broke down they came up and they formed those small rocks 
with cracks and crevices, right? So that is my third layer, the sea horizon. And below this layer, I have the bedrock, which is sometimes also known as R horizon. Why R horizon? R for rock, A, B, C, according to the levels, and then R for rock, that is why R horizon, which is also known as bedrock. That forms the bottom, of, bottom layer of the soil profile. Because all that rocks, ultimately, when they break down, they form the C horizon. Then from the C horizon, they become B horizon. And from the B, they form the A horizon also, right? So these all are the different layers of soil. And that is why these different horizons, when they are made together, when they are described together, we tell that this is the soil profile. Understand? Now, next we have the soil types, okay? 9.3, topic 9.3, it is the soil types. I told you already that first we'll talk about the properties and then we'll talk about the different types of soil. So here, the different types of soils are according to their properties, according to their particle size, according to the content of humus in them, right? So if I define soil, if I want to define soil, what will that be? Are simply a mixture of rock particles and humus, isn't it? Now, rock particles could be whatever size. They could be small. They could be very small. They could be slightly bigger, right? But all the rock particles of different sizes together mixed with the humus, they form what we know as soil. Understand? Now, the soil is based, it is classified on the basis of whatever ratio of particles we have different size particles i told you know some particles are small some are very small some are slightly bigger some are quite bigger so according to that we have got different types of soil right let's talk about the first type first type is the sandy soil if soil contains greater proportion of the bigger particles so suppose i have a soil in which the bigger particles are more in ratio, they are more in uh, proportion, we call such um, type of soil as a sandy soil. Obviously, that will have little lesser of humus, right? Since it has got bigger particles, right? Now, if I have a soil which is very small in size particles, right? So if particle size are quite small and they are quite large in number, I have got those fine particles in a higher number or in a higher quantity, then such soil I call as the clay soil. Understand? Now, beta, imagine if the soil is very small particle size, or very big particle size, right? We have clay and uh, clay and sandy, right? Both of these will have little bit problems. Those we will discuss little later, right? I will tell you, but once I, I should be telling you about the third type and then I will explain about the differences between the three kinds of soil, okay? The third type of the soil is known as the loamy soil. Now, loamy soil is considered as the best type for plant growth. Why? Because if you remember, in, in clay, we had very small particle size. In uh, sandy, we had quite bigger particle size. So if I have a mixture of both, that means little bit small size, little bit average size, and little bit bigger size. That, this kind of soil, I will call as a loamy soil. Because... This is the kind of soil which will have sand also, clay also, and another type of average sized particles which are called silt. What is silt? Silt simply means average sized particles. Okay, if I, do, if I tell you what is the uh, type of soil in which the smallest particles are more in number, you will say clay. If I say bigger particles are more in number, you will say sandy. And what if I say average size are more in numbers? Then you will say average size particles are ma'am silt and the kind of soil which is rich in silt that we call as the loamy soil. Understand? Now, this is why it is best because it has got particles of all size, right? It has got humus into it. That is the reason it can hold the water. 
now i will talk about the the properties okay little bit i am stopping the share screen because there is nothing more that i need to show you i need to explain what happens okay so uh, let's say i have got the uh, sandy soil right sandy soil will have slightly bigger particles right slightly bigger particles and if i have clay soil very small particles have you seen talcum powder talcum powder everybody has seen just like that such fine particles they form the clay soil right and if i have both right and slightly bigger particles slightly smaller particles and very small particles then i will call it loamy soil now beta you think yourself okay you think yourself that you have taken <clears throat> you can you have taken very small pebbles in in one glass okay and you have taken let's say talcum powder i am saying talcum powder because i want you to relate with the size of the clay soil particles right that is why i am saying talcum powder right and in the third one you put mixture of both talcum powder as well as um uh, stones little little stones right so and you put water in all three which one will be able to hold the water first thing tell me this one will be able to hold the water not at all because it has got such big uh, big gaps in the size of the particles right so such big gaps they will not be able to retain the water right let's talk about the second one clay will that be able to hold the water yes it will be able to hold the water very well its water retention capacity is very good so even if you put water in talcum powder that will also absorb the water right just like the clay soil right so i think you would have played uh, played with the clay also which we the, we have the playing clay now so that is also like that yes what is that that has got, that is a lump why is that a lump because it has absorbed water and it has been made like that earlier it was very small particles of clay which we Uh, put water in and we make a lump out of it so similarly this tells us that clay soil will have very good water retention right and the third one this one will also have good water retention since it has got sandy soil also it has got clay clay soil also right so water retention i would say water retention is good in this water retention is good in this and water retention is poor in this let's talk about the next property next property is the presence of air okay presence of air you know air is very important to be present in the soil particles why because all those organisms have to live in the soil even the roots of the plants they have to they have to live in the soil they have to breathe in the soil so if i have a soil in which air spaces are there so the roots will be able to breathe properly but if there are not enough air spaces the roots will not be able to breathe properly that is why they will not be able to survive and they will not be able to give the food to the or give the nutrients to the plant so ultimately plant growth will not be supported then also so let's talk about the air uh, spaces will air spaces be, be present in the sandy soil yes definitely it has got so much air gaps right so air space will be present what about clay soil think will there be any air no since the particles are so small they don't have any air spaces between the particles and that is the reason that the if i have pure clay soil roots will not be able to breathe into that because they will not get any air so air content is very poor in the clay soil understand last we come to the loamy soil i think i should name them loamy this is clay and this is sandy right so if i have the loamy soil will that have good air yes that will have because that had some bigger particles also now that has got bigger particles also smaller particles also so air spaces will be available in the loamy soil so now do you understand why is loamy soil better in fact best because it has got both the things which are required 
This one has got air spaces but has no water retention. This one has got water retention but no air spaces. And this one has got both of them. That is why we can say that this is the best soil. Loamy soil is the best soil to support the plant growth. Understand? I hope this is clear to everybody. Let us now again come back to the share screen. I'll quickly show you the share screen once again. Right. So now we have another activity, which is activity 9.3 about the uh, these samples only. Okay, we collect the samples of clay, loamy and sandy soils. This is a very interesting activity. Okay, now what are we doing? We have taken little bit of each sample. Okay, we are removing any pebbles, rocks or if there is any other unwanted material, we will remove it. Okay, now I'll add water drop by drop and knead the soil just like just like that, we make a dough out of it, right? We make a dough out of it, yes. Now, as I make a dough out of it, I will see, I will use enough water, but I will not add extra water. Little, little water I'll add, okay? Now, when I try to make a ball and later on, when I try to roll that ball, I will find out that... The, prop, the first type, which is the sandy soil, I won't be able to make a good lump out of it. What is the reason? If you remember, I have just told you the reason that its water retention is very poor. What is retention? That whatever water we have given us, it, it, given it, it has kept it with itself. It is not able to retain the water. Whatever water I give it, it will simply let it pass on. Right. So it will not be able to retain the water. Water retention is poor. That means I cannot make a dough out of it or a lump out of it. And what about the clay soil? Will I be able to make a lump or kneading, a kneading lump out of it? Yes, definitely. You have all played with the playing clay. Yes. What is that? Clay only. Right. So that means with the clay, I can do that. And what about with loamy soil? Loamy soil also I can make, but not a very good one. Okay, I can make not a very fine one, right? So that also brings me to the conclusion why we use clay for making pots, toys, statues, because once it gets the water, it retains it. It does not let the water go. So when it will not let the water go, it will form a very fine structure with water, right? Next, we come to the properties of soil. Now, properties of soil, percolation and all these, they are little longer topics, which I won't be able to cover in this class, okay? So, what I will do is, I will continue from here in the next class, right? Because we have properties of soil, we have got this percolation, then we have little... Um, moisture in the soil, absorption of water, right? And finally, soil and crops, right? So very small uh, portion is left that we'll be doing in our next class because I want you right now to understand these three properly. I have also given you a homework. Your homework is, what is your homework? Your homework is you will draw diagram of soil profile. Don't forget to make it, okay, because this is a very important diagram from the understanding point of view as well and from the exam point of view as well, okay? So please make this diagram and from the properties of soil, we will be starting our class day after tomorrow, okay? I hope the things are clear to you. If there is anything which is not clear, just note it down somewhere. So uh, whenever our schools open and we meet next, you can definitely ask those doubts. Okay. I hope everything is clear to you. Make the diagram, read the chapter till the, till the point that we have covered. Okay. We'll meet now, day after tomorrow. Take care, all of you. Bye-bye.